So I did in one of the previous videos that I did, we we're looking at um, this village stocks, the standard design of the traditional village stocks, many of which exist all around um, England, really the British Isles, you know, and um, there's quite a few examples of them near here, actually. So in one of the videos, I pointed out that the layout and design of the stocks with the hand holes and the two a standing stone at each side is can be interpreted and templated over the recumbent stone circles once you understand the moon going over the top and the circular shape of it um there's similarities in that and because the prehistoric people and then obviously the lineage from them who studied the astral movements and the you know movements of the heavens and astrology and astronomy and things like that they you know the druids were the holders of the knowledge particularly for um you know geography astronomy cartography if they did their own versions of maps whether you know they might have been not the type of maps that we've got now, but some some sort of maps in some sort of form, even if it was like in sort of link linguistic form, stored as poems or stories, you know, to remember it. So the I think the knowledge of the recumbent stone circles and the the moon, particularly lunar movements, and then when you've got the Newgrange and Stonehenge, which have the sun and it, you know the, the the high and low sun, it you've got there there is some religious crossover between the when you come in from the celtic traditions the celtic crosses which have a circle through the cross you've got a link between the cross for christianity and the ancient stone monuments so the recumbent stone circles and the ancient stone religious early very early christian carvings and stone crosses around Scotland have got a connection between the crossover between the Druid culture, which lasted quite a long time in the um, west of Ireland and the north of Scotland, and Christianity. Now, I note that I think it's very significant that the... Well, the church were actually involved in the judicial process. The Druids had certain um, members of the order who were giving, making judgments and decisions of the public, they, they were in a way like, you know, the, the, the judges, you know, we don't know how they exactly set that regime out, how it worked, if they're just wandering around or what, or if you had to take someone to them, you know, to, you had to go to, to, to where they were the base from or whatever, or wherever they travelled round. So there is this judicial capacity connected to the religious order, and then obviously when you cross over to Christianity, you know, forgiveness is a judgment in a way, you know, when you've got confessions, you have, you know, you tell people you've done something and then you, you, the whole confessions is to be forgiven for it, you know, that's the whole point. Um, but then obviously <clears throat> in the Anglo-Saxon times, they're saying this is when the position of constables were established and then as you come into the Norman conquest, then, then they get sheriffs. We still have, obviously, we've got, we're building churches at that point, and you've got this ordained priest had a role, and actually, as well as the constables, you know, it was the responsibility of the public to enforce the law um, and help people of the village had to help. You've still got this kind of role that is inclusive. It says that the priests were partly connected with making judgments and enforcement of the law because, in a way, religion is, you know, the good behaviour, you know. So, you know, I would put a picture up on the screen now, but it's, it's in the other video of the village stocks. You know what the village stocks look like. That was an invention, a tool, an installation which... I believe actually manifests and remembers. It's almost a memorial 
sculpture or installation, I think it is. It, it clearly is. You know, t- you know, if someone's been naughty and misbehaved, then you have to. They have to lock them in the stocks. You know, the an- the arms are stuck in there or the head or whatever. You know, but there are symbolic references in the design and construction. You could. You could. There could have been many many designs to restrain someone. You could have had lots of different ways. You know, they could have had ones that were comfortable where they could just be laid down flat or whatever, you know, but it's this stone at each side and then with the round circles in between. And I just think there's too many similarities to the recumbent stones. And in a way, you know, the Druids are meant to be, were supposed to be to do with behaviour as well, you know, people not misbehaving um, and, you know, judicial function. Um, and obviously the, the, the behaviour of the people is to do with the person's will the will of the person you know they're, they've got their own will and usually you know animals and creatures who have got a will usually you know uh, c- can be you know the whole point of the shepherd and the flock is to keep the animals you know um, you know behaving or whatever so it, there's something in that but the, the one thing that you know I wanted to talk about now and we've gone six minutes 30 seconds is that on the other hand when we've got this when if you go on to merriman videos um she does a video about the the forcing changes of names and changes of surnames and forced changes of spelling of surnames um this, this, this video i've actually linked into the petition um, it's in the updates in the petition if you look through them all. It actually has um, she gives evidence, really serious evidence. This is a professional historian, I think, and she gives evidence about lots of name changes, whether the church imposed them or whether it was the you know royalist forces that imposed them or what, because they wanted didn't want to know what people's actual heritage and genealogy actually was. So um, there, there was a bit of a cover-up and change of the history there, right? Now, it, it, it could be seen as an attack on heritage in a way. Now, I actually do think that the use of the stocks as punishment, you know, or... It's connecting it with something that's bad, though. In a way, you're making a memorial, if it does remind you of the recumbent stones, but, you know, if it does, then it, they're using this bad connection, you're misbehaving, right? So what I just wanted to draw attention to now is the establishment, you know, through the um, 1200s and 1300s, which is probably around, you know, like the, it's the Robin Hood myth era, you know, it's after the Anglo-Saxon time, um, probably after the Norman time, you know, because after the Romans pull out, there is a bit of a resurgence of, you know, the Druidry because it wasn't complete until it wiped out in the far reaches of Ireland and Scotland. Um, when when you've got around, you know, 800 is when you get all this transfer of the Irish gods and knowledge into the Book of Kells um, and you, you, you kind of get this, this Passover... Of, of of transference in a way, kind of downloading it into Christianity, sort of. Which you know, I actually think the recumbent stone. I, I always think of when the moon passes over the recumbent stones. It kind of makes me think of the feast of the Passover because it's like the spirit passing over. You know, it's the the heavenly motions that are fixed in the movements. You know, the gravity of, of of this big celestial object moving over, which we don't really have the capacity to change it. It's like you know, Mars is the red planet. Um, that's really sometimes like behavior can't be controlled or tamed. You know, there's certain behaviors. Um, that, that are fixed, you know, and, and that, you know, it, it's the worst behaviours that usually have to be contained. So, yeah, so I think that having those stocks, though, in a way, I'm sort of seeing it now as maybe it's one of these attacks on the Celtic heritage and culture. And I've gone a long way around the bushes to talk about it, I mean, nine minutes, no, nearly ten minutes. But um, so someone's posted about this lockup. These, this is one in um, Hebrew, 
Hatebreeds. So they designed these lockups, right? And they're actually shaped a little bit like the top of the um, clog teach, the Irish round towers, you know? I always kind of thought they looked a bit like the Irish round tower shape. Um, and the, first, the, one, the one that I've seen, I haven't actually been to this one, but they are like the Celtic roundhouses, you know, like the roundhouse, you know, like um, Connaught is like a cone on a knot, like the walls of it are in a circle shape with a cone on the top, Connaught. It's actually making it, so I think looking at these, really, it's associating, if you want to associate with the previous culture of the Celtic roundhouses, which there must be, but there must have been a lot more of them left at that time, you know. Now there are very, very, very few left, original walls of them left. Obviously, around the 12 and 1300s, there might have been more left, you know. Um, but people take the materials to build things with or even purposely destroy them. So it, 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 by locking someone in there because they've been bad, really, it is associating that previous roundhouse design and style with being naughty in a way. Um, I've put this example here of this one, which is the one that I've been to and seen, which is rather a good example because it's got a really, really cone-shaped roof on it. And that one's at um, Breeden on the Hill. And as a matter of fact, Breeden on the Hill is, um, it, Leicestershire is quite flat, really. All the area around Breeden on the Hill is quite flat, but you've got this massive hill. It's now got a church on it, actually. And um, it was one of the beacons, you know, what, what, that was meant to be, they used to have a beacon on it for, you know, one of the Spanish Armada. But before that, it, it's apparently recognised as a prehistoric settlement and a Iron Age settlement on there. And surprise, surprise, they've quarried into the side of it. One side of it is completely massacred and defaced. Out of all the places you could dig, dig into the side of a prehistoric ancient site. Not unlike they've done here with the Warriors tomb or had a go at it, tried to do it, and um, other ones as well. There's always this attack on... The heritage, you know, whenever there's any place that happens to be, you know, heritage that's, you know, pre-conquest, it always seems to have somebody's added, added a good digging at the side of it or whatever. So when I saw this, when I actually went to Breeden on the Hill, and I've seen this a few times, I actually thought it was amazing, quite novel-shaped building, because it reminded me of the clog teach. I'm like, oh, wow, it's at the top of the clog teach, because you don't see any clog teach that's still intact in Britain. I think there's one example in Scotland. We've got one up here, but it's a folly. It's not an actual one. It's one of the ones that was made in the 1700s after one of the pamphlets went round with the design of them. P you know, um, people who are liberal, supporting the liberals. And that's another thing. If you associate with the clog teach, if you associate with the Liberal Party, then maybe you're naughty and you should be locked up, <laughs> which is, you know, typical Tory, um, isn't it? You know, maybe you should be locked up in a factory as a labour worker for the rest of your life. Maybe you could be locked in there, you know. Um, maybe you should be locked inside there, um, cobbling shoes for the rest of your life. The Tories can lock you in there as a labour worker, you know. Um, locked in the factory forever, you know. <laughs> or... If you vote liberal, then we'll lock you up in there. You know, if you're if you're on Extinction Rebellion, you know, if you're a protester, you if you if you're exercising your political rights, then you'll get locked up in there. That's what where the liberals get locked up. You know, um, <laughs> so no, I think that might be where the loony bin came from. Because actually, if you think of it, loony bin, right? Loony bin. They use the they, they call the loony bin for Lancaster, that um, lunatic asylum at Lancaster, which is a lot later, but it's got the river loon that goes past it, but being a bit crazy and associated with the moon is meant to be together. Loon is the word for moon. So you've got recumbent stones, and the moon goes over the recumbent stone, moon, loon. Then you've got the stocks, which actually are a model of the recumbent stone with the handles in it to lock up loonies, you know? And then we've got the liberty cap to lock them up in there. So it looks like the old Celtic roundhouse as well. It seems to me this is the... It, in a way, it acknowledges memory of that old culture, you know, it's not completely eradicating it because actually pulling the sites to pieces is eradicating it and not having it written down, or if you do write it down, don't write the truth about it. But when you do find examples of them recreating it or doing a model of it, in instances where it is remembered, for example, the common stone circles with the village stock design or with these um, it's always to be naughty or bad. 
So it's if we are to remember them, you know, do we to remember them being bad? Which is what the Romans did, saying that we're always fighting an argument with each other. And, you know, carcasses strewn around, hanging from trees, God knows what Jewish blood ceremonies, which, you know, is not really that much different from walking through an abattoir now. <laughs> you know, oh, there's a guy with a bolt gun. What are you doing today? Or shooting cows inside of head with a bolt gun. Poof, poof. <laughs> oh, nice, clean. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we don't string um, the guts up now from trees anymore. <laughs> We're just nice and clean and simple. We've got a bolt gun through the side of the head. <laughs> oh, look, he's a policeman with a, with, with a taser. <laughs> it's shocking. He's, he's a police officer with a taser. I'm not, I'm not a cow. I'm not a cow. Oh, do you want a bolt gun then instead? Or do you want a taser? You want to take your pick, you want a taser or a bolt gun? You know, oh, well, it's all right. I don't want a bolt gun inside of my head because, you know, you know, there's Bury St. Edmunds. He's already buried my dopamine receptors in enough sugar to put me out, you know, put me asleep for, you know, it's like power nap. I mean, you know, it's, 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 you know they fill with enough sugar to take out my kidneys and my liver, um, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know, but... Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's tragic that all the memories of the past are associated with being bad, you know, like on the side of the pagan nature worship and all that. But if you don't understand it properly and what it is, a lot of the, a lot of the Celtic gods just represented things, forces, and explained certain things of what, what they knew and certain... Um, in a way, each god had a different school, didn't it? Because they were the god of this and that, of music. So obviously, like this, this personification is classed under you know music and you know Leah dancing, fighting stuff like that. You know who knows? You know those might have those, that might be the knowledge of what all the different schools was of the Druids left. You know retained in what what well, a lot of those Celtic gods. Uh, crossover a lot of them represent the same things which is why i think there's been quite a few duplicated you know or whatever um but but you know there could be lots of knowledge retained what's left over of it um in those gods for what the different druid schools were because even the term like rhyme and meter when you look at the new grange and you've got the circular spiral it's like rhyme and meter reels the reels you know and they used to say how many um, meters of knowledge did you learn because like you know to learn the whole song it's to go to measure a length of a song, so it's a length like you know meter rhymes and meters, and then you've got the reels because when you learn the music, the length of the music, how many reels can you learn? It's it's what what volume of knowledge have you got? And that's the I think that's you know well it's self explanatory really, but it's how you know part of the druid school was the bards and learning the songs and stories and remembering them, and how many songs and stories could you remember? You know the, the how many meters of the tune, the the the, the knowledge, you know, because they passed it on verbally, didn't they? So you know, um, yeah. So this is more evidence, and, and I think that this really links onto in the modern day when it was still happening, when we've got Warriors Tomb, even the word, you know, Warriors Tomb. It's always about death and dying. You, you've got this. Um, build you know, this this kind of like to it's the same thing what we're looking at here is remember a roundhouse and a clog teach but you know they could have had it in any they could have had a square box you know romans built square boxes before then didn't they naughty boy roundhouse clog teach lock him up right that's what it is village stocks recumbent stone circles naughty lock him in the stocks right so, yeah, they build the shape and form of it. It's almost, it, it, I, I think it, we're looking at the same principle in effect with, you know, we've got the Royal Armouries in Leeds. We've got the Royal Armouries are in West Yorkshire. They're not in London, right? They're in West Yorkshire, Agbridge, right? Elmet. And we've got Emily Moore Mast, big, nice big transmitter there, you know? Nice big... Um, Ivory Tower or whatever, what, what, just before Tolkien popped his clogs. Um, you know, venerate the area, yet yeah, we've got the actual Brigantes Hill Fort has got the Victoria Tower banged on it, you know, which is a bit of a lock-up. You know, it was meant to be there for shelter, but you can't get a shelter, and then you've got to pay to go in. They knock the free house down, the pub down, the free house, which is for liberty and freedom. Well, getting drunk and liberty and freedom, maybe. 
And, you know, they tried to drop a bomb on that um, clog teach replica that folly at Grange Moor at Dumb Steeple. And then you got, you know, they've actually banged the chemical factory around the river area of the junction. It would almost like building a chemical factory at Newgrange where the river went past Newgrange. Can you imagine if they put concrete bridges over it and concreted all the um, grass and put a chemical factory there? I don't think the Irish should be too happy about it. Although they have concrete at the front of the building and a lot of people complain that, you know, Newgrange should be like in its original natural form. There's a lot of like the pastry guys, a lot of local people in Ireland actually who talk about it on the on the big groups say that they're not that greatest fans of what they did to the front of Newgrange, you know. Maybe that might have had some um, you know, royalist influence on it, you know, slipped something into the blueprint of the plans. I don't know. But um definitely here, you know, we've had that we've got the Alex Hogg map with the D the letter D for West Riding of Yorkshire exactly sp- bang over that Brigantes Hill Fort and then they went and manifested it and built the D Street on there and they, they crept up to it as, as best they could from the the promised this, you know, um the promised it was going to be um you know the Yorkshire show um at Dalton and it was going to all be, you know, for agriculture in Britain. But we didn't get agriculture, we just got, you know, annihilated by factories and industry and everyone, all the Brigantes Local leftover, well, the the not leftover, but the remnants of that culture are all transformed into factory workers. You know, this area has been built, made into, transformed into a. You know, you will all now people in this area and the children that you're going to have will all become factory workers. You know, it, we were not going to build agriculture in villages and you will be, you know, farmers and um, stuff like that or, um, you know, landowners or this or that. They've actually designed and created it will be, you know, now everyone here, unfortunately, even though it's only three, two, three or four generations, they all, that's what we are and that's what they celebrate. And then if you try and say, you know, maybe it's not a good idea for this area, well, you know, they, they're actually fighting and battling for it now. It's like, no, we... This division thing, you know, we've kind of been divided in a way, which is like, you know, what they say, it's the division, um, it's what the latest Doctor Who series 13, they've got this like this division, um, she's got that, that um, woman who's kind of a bit reminiscent of the Queen anyway, you know, um, running this division section or whatever, and, you know, they've got us all arguing between each other over, you know, the, the, the pub, the Liberty, the Liberals pub that got knocked down, then we've got the, but then the imperialist tower gets planted there, and then you've got everyone, everyone saluting that and arguing that side. But then you've got the actual place was a, you know, you, you had a prehistoric settlement there, an Iron Age settlement, and then the people who kind of like that, um, it, 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 and then you've got the people, the modernists want this new cafe on there, um, and, and you've got serious issues because everyone's ended up being divided because they ended up making it that way and changing that way, which is like these. You know, get people to, you know, if you have got a name or heritage from the previous culture that was here before we got invaded and taken over, then, you know, it's, it's be bad people. And unfortunately, that's what upsets me now is I, you can't really, you know, you get all these history groups around our area on Facebook saying, no, oh, you talk about history, you talk about history. They don't actually want to talk about history. What they want to talk about is their history and the granddad's history, you know, like, oh, when it was full of mills or whatever, but they don't actually want to talk about the history before. The history groups of West Yorkshire seem to have the extent and capacity to be badgers, you know, um, oh, some ancient stocks here from the 1300s, you know, there's an old church, you know, and there's some more barge routes, there's some old, old weaving cottages. As soon as you get back to a certain date, which just happens to be, you know, around, um, oh, it's um, 1066, if you go past there, then the lambs and buzzers start going off like you've passed the red tape there, you've passed the red line, whoop, 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 God save our racist green. God save our queen, but let us all eat ourselves into bad health. You know, stuff our face with cake and battenberg pies, you know, and we will glorify the action. 
God save the Queen while we eat herself to death with Mr. Kipling's cakes and Fox's biscuits because we love them and we will fight and battle for our ill health. Uh, you know, I, you know, it's almost as if um, <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous in our area. It really is bad. It's bad. It is terrible. It's like a, a ferocious patriotism of self destructive greed and eating. And almost, you know, if you are not griming the factory floor, there's something wrong with you, you know? You know, get, you know, he's a working class hero. You know, if you're not a working class hero, then, you know, they'll kick you out of West Yorkshire, you know what I mean? You know, we go back in time, and we were working class heroes working in the fields, you know, in a, in a, in a windmill or whatever it was, you know? Um, bloody hell, picking berries and, you know, turnips whatever that's still working it, it, but what was created at a certain point is what has ended up making complete smog and industry um you know and it, it, it it's almost like um we're not allowed to there's a certain pe time period back in history and you're not allowed to go beyond that barrier. It's like in Time Bandits when there's that glass wall, isn't it? And they've got to smash the glass through with the... They, they break the glass and then there's all the evil tower behind it and everything, you know? Can you remember in Time Bandits when they get up to that big sort of wall, but it's invisible, you can't see it? And thinking of it now, when we were in school, when you talk to people who were in Wiltshire and went to school, they're all learning about Stonehenge, you know? They're all learning about whatever it was in their area, you know? They're learning about prehistory when... People in even Americans, Americans seem to know more about our prehistory. They're all learning. Look on Indiana Jones at the start. You know, all Americans are learning about Newgrange, um, George Lucas. They all know about all these ancient Irish sites. You know, and all these Harvard students. But we don't know about them ourselves over here because when we in West Yorkshire, they made certain that all they taught us about was the canals. The um, barge ponies, um, you know, the weaving mills and cottages, um, uh, you know, maybe Bybury Village sort of thing. They did a lot of weaving cottages in Bybury Village because actually places like Haworth and Keithley and places like that did have a lot of weaving cottages and stuff. So kind of we would have been a little bit sort of like the equivalent of Bybury Village in a way with the weavers' cottages then coming into the Luddites, we learned about the Luddites, but we had to learn about the Luddites who lost, the Luddites revolted against industry and lost. So the first lesson they teach you is, if you revolt against all this factory smog and stuff that we're doing and getting you to work in as labourers, then you are going to lose. You will lose. And then, you know, nothing exists before that. It's like on the latest Doctor Who on the Sea Devils episode that's just, you know, gone up recently and, like, we're just waiting for the next instalment. Now, they've got this fog and mist and then this ship comes through it, you know, but you can't see what's at the other side of the mist or what was before it. That's kind of what they've done with our area, really. You know, they, they teach us about Castle Hill, about um, Meltham Chap, Dunelm, or the Moors, what, you know, the, the, there is a book that I've got here and it's a very good book, but they wouldn't teach you this in school when we were at school. Um, the prehistoric people of the Pennines, you know. The, 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 I think the, it's this Tolkien coming up to see what's going on, studying the language, what words have they got, you know, still reminiscent using in Yorkshire, left over from when we were trying to change everything and get rid of the words when we sent them over to Ireland. Didn't we wipe all those words out when, when we sent them over to Ireland? <laughs> Didn't we get rid of all that, you know, all, that, all those words in history and language when we were in Ireland? You know, Tolkien, you know, go up to West Yorkshire and see what other words are left over that we didn't manage to wipe out, you know, and then he's with Egg doing this Yorkshire dialect book. And then the next thing, we're all, you know, at school, right, <clears throat> what are we learning about? Oh, it's Professor Tolkien, you know, how are we going to be learning about Castle Hill? And, oh, look, there's the Warrior's Tomb. That's very interesting. I wonder what happened with that, seeing that it's only 3.5 kilometres from Castle Hill. And there's Donnell, another hillfort chip looking um, thing platform and no there's the moors what goes on there we could learn something about history there the evolution of mankind dennis mckenna watch his latest um video presentation meeting that they're gonna have soon if you can afford it it's quite expensive you know but um you know this is what dennis mckenna's talking about did we learn what uh, did you know how about you know oh it's yorkshire history and he's dennis mckenna <laughs> maybe we might have learned something then you know but it was it was all Mills and factories, you know, that's the history.
that's our history and that's all we've got. You know, don't go past the mists of time. Don't go through the diff, diff, this invisible barrier. But this is what you get now. It's there is unfortunately, and it's not like this around Oxfordshire because you know they've got the White Horse, Uffington Camp, Maiden Castle, Old Oswestry. Street. These people seem to acknowledge this history and these sites, but our area, no. You know, it's it's even the locals won't talk about it. And what I don't like about it is this cock crowing stone. They've got this big stone um, up Meltham. And, um, you know, if you ever think about, you know, screwing the paint off or removing it or anything, then the next thing that happens is, you know, I reported it to the council. Don't you think it's time we got rid of that cock growing stone? It's rather rude and offensive. I think it's putting people off going up there, you know, collecting mushrooms in season. And it's kind of like, very rude and offensive. I, I kind of think it's making it kind of off, off putting and weird to kind of play, play, play correct, normal, you know, um, Dwayne Dibley type people, you know, who are like, you know, average Oxfordshire Walker or, you know, people who come up from the Midlands or whatever. It's almost intimidating to a minute. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 I, but then, you know, if you, Report it to the council to clean it off, and the next thing the moose are set on fire, you know, as a, a warning, you know, leave the cockroach stone alone. It, 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 it's it's intimidating, and I don't think it's that tit, I think it's quite distasteful, really. That thing there, it's, you know, it, it's not when, you know, the actual, I think that that has been somehow, I don't know how, but I think it's been put there by the same. And made to look like some juveniles have done it, but I think it is there psychologically to deter and intimidate people from actually the resource, the natural resource that's there, and further to that, also ignoring, f refusing to accept um, Melvin Chap Dunelm as a his, a religious first a religious site, secondly all the surroundings of it religious site and a historic heritage site connected to Castle Hill and the Warrior's Tomb. Clearly all three are connected together without question in the same veil, in the same shire, um, not unlike, you know, Battles Brain, Scratch Brain, Middle Hill and uh, at Warminster and, you know, um, on the south coast, you know, you've got um, Sisbury Hill and Shanktonbury Hill at Worthing as well operating together in fact the south coast is like absolutely dawed with them our area isn't that's the thing i think there's a couple of barnsley sheffield way but west west yorkshire the west riding of yorkshire doesn't really have that many hill forts in large numbers like um super density like down south so you wouldn't really have one lone one it's such a prominent one with such a backdrop behind it i know there were beautiful ones in wales you know um, there were some amazing one, um, hill forts in Wales with nice scenery, and also you know that um, that spectacular dragon-shaped one that clearly is the Pendragon Hill Fort, at, um, you know, um, at Hembury Cross um, when you come into Devon. It's like literally guarding the entrance to Devon and Cornwall. But you know, ours is is one of the spectacular ones with the Pennine Ridge, and the the, the placing of it is significant with the river, with the Ghoul and the River Air. Um, from actually starting at the Pennines and going to the sea, the whole landscape is the set and setting. Now, just to have that little lone hill fort there is wouldn't it wouldn't make sense if there aren't any others in the area really in that county. It's not like absolutely drenching them like down south, but we are actually drenched in resource, you know, in cultivation resource. So compared to their so the um, biodiversity map says, according to that, you know. So I think that it's sort of, you know, so if, if, you, if you've if you got one hill fort, you would think that there was something going on there, but there is something going on there because there's three. And then it makes sense. Oh, there's three hill forts together. But then there aren't loads and loads near that. But you've got quite central base for something. And then, you know, you've got Sheffield and Barnes and we don't know which other ones. But to, 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 point, to point up to Catam and Dewar and say, oh, it's, you know, Richmond, North Yorkshire, that one that's a couple of miles north of there, which I've been to it, it's, it, it, it doesn't stand out to me as, it, it, you know, it, it, it's not, 
you know, there might have been a lot of vill- you know there might have been a lot of round houses there and villages and stuff like that. But as for landscape and set and setting, it it doesn't have that punch to me. It ain't got that panache, you know. It might have been a big village of the Celts, and there might have been a Queen, Queen Catman doer there, but it just ain't got that flamboyant. Um, it's not got the panache. It ain't, it ain't got the flair of like. Henry Cross, which shouldn't even be called Henry Cross, you know. He ain't got the flair of Maiden Castle, you know. It's, and, and all these sites, there is no, the thing about those Celtic sites is there is no best site. They're all unique. It's like they're very, very different and they all utilise something very beautiful, like the White Horse has got the beautiful White Horse in the hillside and then it's got its own little long barrow and a hill fort. And then you've got, you know, you've got that Embry Cross with a magnificent dragon where the actual hill fort is the head of the dragon. And you've got the fires on it at night, the wings open, like, you know, almost like a, a, a pen, like to, to, to sort of like like a border of Devon and Cornwall or something. You know, and then you've got that Battlesbury, Scratchbury, Middle Hill, which is like three together, but then there's quite a lot of like around there anyway. It's sort of like, you know, they're all very, very unique. And some of those Welsh ones are on beautiful, majestic places. Don't get me wrong, with beautiful landscapes around them. And and the Scottish ones as well. So they liked to have stylish places. And then, like, I mean, Oswestry, it's got some beautiful woodland around it. And it is a very intricate and spectacular hill for itself. You know, it is flamboyant in a way because the designs of the sides are very intricate. The actual um, ramparts of it, uh, multivalets around it are beautifully intricate and very spectacular. I mean, that that itself is flamboyant. I mean, maybe some of the other ones did have at one point, but ours is it, it is it is very beautiful and majestic when you look at it from the right view and and meaningful. And it wouldn't just be there by itself. And then when you look, what's that? No, oh, it's a forty meter high. A little bit of shaped um, ill fort sized platform in the middle of a quite a big valley. That actually, it, the entrance to that valley looks a little bit like the court um, tomb entrance on the Irish, on like Bella Snap or whatever, or on the Irish ones. Oh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Well, that's interesting. And we're running down it, and a big um, 40 meter high mound there, which looks like a bit feminine. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because actually, I wouldn't have thought of that if I hadn't seen that Glendruid Valley, which is like a female crack with the dolmen in the middle, right on the spot in the crack. I was like, oh, yeah, right, I get it now. That's symbolic. And I'm like, oh, well, ours has kind of got that feminine thing to it as well there. And then you've got the two Long Barrow Hill Forts, um, massive Long Barrow Hill Forts, kind of even going towards or away from it, kind of all like, kind of bit sperm, sperm kind of representation. And you've got all the. Because all the rain collects from the rivers and then trickles down to the river and goes past there, doesn't it? It, it, It's all symbolic. And then you go, oh, yeah, well, they did use feminine forms because look at Hetty Pegler's Tuft, you know, the old stone over the hole. And then you've got the Devil's Elbow one um, that's on Isle of Man. I forgot its name now. Something, um, Cornville Cairn, is it, or something, whatever. Um, And there were plenty more on the Isle of Man. Maybe it should be called the Isle of the Woman if it's got that um, Conville Cairn, which is more feminine shape. Maybe somebody swapped. It. Maybe the Christians did a quick <laughs> swap the name around on that. Which setting, you know, we we don't know. This is where we get all the names getting changed around. So, I actually, I I strongly believe, and I think it originates both from the royalist lineage and through the church to kind of, in a way make the previous culture out to be the bad guys, really, because of, you know, it's, it's a lock-up. Clog Teach, Irish Rang Towers, um, Round Houses, Naughty, lock them up. You know, it's, oh, look, let's do it if you, if you want to start, you know, thinking about recumbents doing circles, you know, and the moon going over the top of them and start asking funny questions, then, you know, we can stick... If you start asking, you know, oh, right, if don't ask, don't be coming and asking what the stone circles are for, I will lock you up in the stocks, you naughty, naughty Celtish boy. On your knees, O'Neill, you lunatic. <laughs> it's almost that, isn't it, you know? It's like, don't, you know, don't be asking what the warriors do. Oh, what's that? What's that big mound there? Don't, 
There's no mound here. They're only in this cinema. The big pictures from America. America. Hollywood. Oh, let's put the big letters on the side of the hill. Hollywood. Now send you the reels of tape. Reels. Learning the reels. The reels. The reels. Learning the reels. The reels. Learning the reels. The reels. The reels. You know. So I'm like, oh, there's a load of film. Look, look it's George Lucas. And Harrison Ford, they've come to film our 40 metre high Ilford, except they can't because it's been completely blocked in by Urban Sprawl and an uh, old cinema, you know? <laughs> well, are there any film? Did, they, did the Americans, America, did Harvard come over and start filming it, you know, before they put the tram station out there and built the cinema and blocking it off? Um, and then quickly um, from that, the Imperial Chemical Industries blocked off the river access, concrete bridge over it, and then the next thing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, George Egg Builders is banging a, a council estate on there, you know? And that's the end of that story, you know? Conquered. <laughs> and then, you know, is there any, 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 any more words left over? You know, and then Zuckerberg, you know, never mind Tolkien coming up. <whistles> Anybody got any words left over, you know? Any words left over in Ireland? Anyone got anything to say? You know, is any words left over? Any words left over? You know, and then, you know, I've got some words to say. And then Zuckerberg's like, Zeke. Ah, Zuckerberg will finish you off, you know, because now the village um, community administration will not allow your post, your pist, if you are to talk beyond the numbers of 1066. Any pists on this group will be offensive to a majesty if you post on this group a boot... Any time, any Tim before tin sixty six, nothing happened here before tin sixty six. Nothing of interest to you. Nothing to celebrate. Nothing to venerate or honor or learn about. Happened here. It is not in existence. It is a figment of your imagination. And if you do start asking questions, you will be. Blocked and banned from pisting in this group, and you will be, um, you know, um, socially shunned by the knitting women and the cake scoffers and the jammy dodgers and the um, coronation um, queens of the pissed office, um, you know, because. Nothing happened here before this time. It did not exist. Do not cross the line. You know, it's almost like the Bible, isn't it? You know, in the beginning, you know, it's like, you know, nothing happened before the Bible. You know, except on, a, um, you know, getting the stone tablets. Yeah, Moses got the stone tablets and that's about it, you know. Before the birth of Christ, what was the year before? <laughs> before zero, nothing existed. Be it's like the, it's almost like the Christianity say like nothing existed before the birth of Christ, didn't it? Nothing existed before the R Norman conquest. <laughs> well, nothing existed before the Roman conquest. It's always that, isn't it? You know, it's like um, you know. Now Facebook and YouTube have got new censorship laws. No law existed. The old pagan laws of free speech did not exist. The evil pagan laws of free speech are bad. You are naughty and we will lock you in the, um, um, you know, the lockup. <laughs> all you hip free speech people will be locked up in the stocks. You're all lunatics if you think you can have free speech because this is now Facebook of Nick Clegg We'll lock you in the nick. <laughs> nick Clegg will lock you up in the nick. <laughs> if you want to have free speech on this platform. Because now <clears throat> we have the barons of the buttons, you know, who decide what can be said and not said in the community, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's, that's, that's literally what it is. That's what's happened. You know, it, it is like... A, attack on heritage and now well, now we're getting an attack on free speech because what free speech can do now is you know get people to sign things um in opposition to it 
And the last thing that they want, the last thing they want is it to look like people are supporting um, these causes that are in opposition to them. I'm not getting any signatures on my petition. Well, I am. When I ask people, the sign, right? I've got signatures on it. And when I start messengering people or tagging them, they, I start to get signatures. Da, 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 like 100, 200, 300, 400. But then the blocks kick in, block, block, block. Now, you'd think, well, why aren't people just signing it anyway? Well, that's the question. Why aren't they just signing it anyway? Well, that's the mysterious thing about the Stonehenge petitions. There's quite a few Stonehenge petitions against the tunnel, but people mysteriously don't appear to be signing it. Now, I think something mysterious is going on. Either signatures are being taken off or it's being blocked. But mysteriously, the Stonehenge petition that is appearing to be against the tunnel, but then further down is actually in favour of a bigger tunnel... 68,000, 67, 68,000 signatures. It just happens to be in the interests of Highways England and the Majesty's Government and, you know, um, the Department of Transport where they actually do want, um, in, they would want to build a bigger tunnel. Now, I wonder where all those signatures are coming from. How is that petition succeeding? Why would they get more? Oh, well, everyone must support that is what you would like to think. Maybe, you know, um, I was England and David Cameron and the Tories sent out a lot of bulk emails to get people to sign. I wouldn't mind finding out. Is someone investigating, you know? Or did they throw a lot of money and change the org? You know? That, that is the question. Because, you know, if, if someone did a petition which gave evidence that your know, heritage had been attacked by the royals and everyone started signing it, it would look like people supported that cause and were opposed to the royals. Now, the last thing that they're going to want is that to happen. Um, so I think there's someone's interfering with the petition. Now, you might think, no, well, they, they, you know, they, 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 they don't support you. Rubbish. Why is it when I get Messenger out and I start sending Messenger, you know, messages, people start signing, sign, 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 sign. This process is working. Oh, uh, you're not allowed to continue this process because Nick Clegg and Mark Zuckerberg say you're forbidden. Oh, right, I'm forbidden. I'll start tagging people. Uh, oh, where's my post gone? Signed, signed, signed. Oh, thanks, that's great. Cheers. Oh, his post disappeared. Yeah, you cannot continue with this line of procedures. You know, it's we're, we're being... We're, we're, uh, you know, and then you go into a group. Oh, you know, we sign this. You know... Oh, people don't seem to be signing it, but well, I'll start tagging people. Oh, now, now they're signing it. Yeah, reach out. I am. Oh, now, now they're signing it. There's, there's, some, there's something not quite right. And this is when you get onto this Black Rock, um, this whole Black Rock thing, isn't it? This, this company that's bigger than, got bigger turnover than most countries, you know, is behind all, it literally owns everything in all companies. And then when you start thinking all these weird things start happening, like, oh, the planes have been moved and they start flying over me, and now that they, they've they built up two towers at MLM Mast, and now what happened? I never saw those notice, planning notices for that thing behind, and now they're building next to us and blocking us all in. All these things are happening, um, and then all the bus um, times are going funny. You know, all these bad luck is happening. Why is that? You know? Well, I just happened to be doing a campaign against the um, overriding powers of the... In government because they've done something bad that I've investigated, you know, all these Balfour Beatty company and care and that, oh, we might own a part of that, oh, could it be BlackRock? How about the police chiefs, you know, who have you know, put legal red signs up everywhere around the country, you know, we've investigated, you know, nothing's been done about it, you know, how about their security system companies, does that happen to be anything to do with BlackRock as well? Hmm, something strange going on here, you know, this is it. Um, and then it comes to the whole, you know, the cock crowing stone, which is painted half black and half white, you know, could Black Rock have been behind that and planted it? Or they could have even sent text messages between teenagers um, and coerced them into thinking, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, I've got, I'll text my mate, I've got a good idea. Let's go write Cochrane Stern on that stern. Oh, yeah, text them back. Oh, oh, you know, the message, things have been slipped into the system, you know, it's almost like, you know, something, you know, and Bill Gates doesn't think that anyone would do that. You know, who would do such a thing? Well, you know, is it in anyone's interests? You know, this is the thing. I don't think that, you know, when, when Bill Gates is going, oh, there's all these conspiracy theories about COVID and that. Um, Bill, 
they've just everyone started protesting around the world and kicking off in a big way and the government's panicked you know and they wanted to stop people doing that now what's the perfect solution to that is have a pandemic so we've got a reason to tell everyone to stay inside and not go out you know it, it's like ignoring the evidence that's blatantly there what's that I just thought I mean if I love it capital for you know well you know in the locking liberties up you know all the liberals were locked up in these clogged teach jail cells if you're a liberal you get locked up you know if, if you're a liberal you get um locked in the stocks that's the problem the, the, there is there has been uh, an attack on heritage and there's nothing you know that's the evidence now you can either ignore it or you can say you know what we're going to do about it you know and it's just like voting, you know, one third of the public do not vote and do not put a tick in the box and do not endorse any of these parties. Yet they are dictating the law to us and what's going to be done with the country. But they will not get, you know, 50% of the, the votes, you know. We need a law where Boris Johnson, you know, needs to prove that he's got half of the human bodies in the country we're not all cattle we're not sheep we ain't got a barcode stamped on the side of his head no matter how retarded boris johnson might think we are you know we're not cattle you know put through a cattle grid when he's like you know um it, it, it it's it's you know everyone needs to be accounted for what their opinion is but they're not that's not what they want to do now they don't want people to have a vote because these corporate companies want to uh, be in control of, of everything. And if if you oppose them, you're bad. You know, exit rebellion are bad. If you oppose them, you're bad. It's just like this, you know. If if you if you're not part of the overriding conquering um people, then then you're you are you are bad. In fact, it's illegal. In fact, overthrowing a government is illegal, you know. Um you know, you can't even think it, you know. In fact, God save God save the, you know, whatever it is. God save the overriding authority. Someone might as well be singing God save Reese Mogg or something, you know. Um, yet, what about everyone else, you know? Um, they get locked up. If you don't, you know, Jeremy Corbyn, if Jeremy Corbyn doesn't sing sing it, then, you know, he gets booted out of the party. You know, if, if you vote Lib Dem, you get locked up, basically, you know. This is the evidence. They were wanting to associate the liberty form and the old Kelly Randhouse form with being naughty. Um, and same with the stocks, you know, go to Looney Bin. Um, and that's what we've got here. We've got the a major triple Brigantes operations area where they've covered it up and built houses on it and made us forget about it, not at all as the history. And in fact, there's been a, a mysterious murder on the hill and then one up at Armanbury in that other pub as well, which happened to be called the um, Crown, the Rosen Crown. Um, you know, the, these things happen. These um, events, you know, like what's happened. And people like, you know, I, I don't think Bill Gates, you know, he, he, things like pandemic and stuff like that, I don't know why he doesn't believe it either. He's in on it and he knows there's been people setting up events or you just don't understand humans and how you can you know people or groups suddenly get an idea and go with it and then that's what happens he doesn't think that it's caused by something else a response to something else like he all bill gates i think understands is when you drop this is hydrochloric acid and when i drop the hydrochloric acid on here this is what happens right oh you know, he's a load of um, people, he's a load of, um, you know, people kicking off all around the whole world, going berserk. Um, so what happens when that happens? Oh, look, he's a pandemic and now everyone's locked down and the government have created a law, you know? Well, you know, that's what happens. That That's uh, a reaction to something. Now, how it came about and who was the person who dropped it or where did it come from? So it came from nature, it just happened, but... That's why we're investigating it and looking into it. But, you know, it, it, it's ignoring that there was a need for it to happen. There wasn't no need for it to happen. You know, oh, we've got a new conquering and dominating force. We don't want them to be affiliated with or praise the other historic heritage. We want them to not follow that 
I want them to think it's you know, bad and naughty. So we'll lock them up. It's a lock. It's a, you know, it's just a lock up house. Th this is it. You know, it's we're always and this is the thing with the whole road systems and all cameras everywhere. You know, I, I think that it's almost like you know, going out actually out to trap people or mislead people and, and getting branded as, as the bad guys, you know. There is, and, and also with the eating as well, you know, people getting addicted to these things that they're saying it's good. Or You see, on one hand, you've got this, these here, so it's bad. You know, ooh, clogged teach and Celtic Roundhouse is bad. But yeah, they've got sugar and cakes, but they're saying good when actually that is bad. It might taste good, but ultimately it's not good it's quite bad particularly for your teeth and your metabolism um but they deception and say oh it's good it's good it's just like the deception in here saying that the previous cultures religions and history and knowledge was bad or rubbish not adequate when it was actually amazing and brilliant that that's the thing there's some it, it's it, it, it's it's you know it's you could say, oh, it's politics, it's political. It's more than politics. It's about, um, you know, it's about um, rulership and domination of people who are in charge, you know, and, 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 and institutions that want to um, be in power and prevail. Not unlike BlackRock, this mysterious company that owns literally apparently everything, not next to everything. Um, and, you know, if all the governments crash and go down... And you know, um, stock market fails. Apparently, all the gold and silver will be worth something. But yet, Gone Brown sold it off, likely to BlackRock and all these people. And then, you know, um, <laughs> and suddenly, this BlackRock company who owns Facebook and YouTube, um, all the, if all the governments fall and all the laws that we've got for his rights and for discrimination and that um, collapse. What we got, Facebook, which isn't operating on the laws of these countries. It's operating on this policy. You can't say this. You can't. Say that, push these buttons, and then suddenly Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Instagram, whatever, are actually ruling the planet, probably in the BlackRock that owns them all, and they've got all the gold and money when all the rest of the money means nothing. And they're, they're actually ruling the planet all of a sudden. BlackRock's actually in charge of the planet on a policy that it now says, well, now Black, this the company has taken over control of the planet, and you will obey the company policy. Which is, you know, and, and oh, I'm trying to put a complaint in, but no one's answering on Facebook. No one's doing it about it. That's it. You won't get any... Uh, I keep on talking, but there's no one there. This is the problem. We're being enforced into this digital device control by these corporate entities who aren't countries or governments, and our governments won't tell them what to do or to stop doing anything. And in fact, they're actually dictating to his governments and having secret meetings with them, but as governments, you know, you know, this platform is not enforcing my law or rights. Well, get a lawyer. Well, I can't afford one because you've put the lawyer out of my price range. And actually, the police should be enforcing discrimination, but they're just ignoring it. You know, you pick the phone up and tell the police chief, you know, tell your officers, just if anyone complains about Facebook or YouTube, just, you know, ignore it. it, it it's, we're, we're actually falling under a corporate regime, you know. Some people seem to be doing something about it, like you know, Elon Musk claims to be doing at the moment. But I didn't really want to go into all that, but actually it's intimately tied into it because we're talking about, you know, this was the police. These, these We had the constables. This is the equivalent of the modern police you know, station cells. And it was made and designed to say that, you know, associations with clogged teaching and round houses are bad. And associations with recumbent stones and, you know, um, it is a lot you in the loony bin. Same as, you know, pagans are bad and that religion was bad. And then they changed all the names and everything. So there's something going on with it. And it's, it's unfortunately, it's still happening now because what I found is I personally have been under attack and I've actually felt under attack actually since I've noticed I've been under attack since around the time that I passed my driving test and I started driving, when I got this trap sprung on me, when I looked into it, top of the moor, on top of the moor, then it was set up, it, it was a trick set up, and it, it wasn't set up to regulations. And Sir Peter Fahey, who, you know, 
who got knighted and knelt and all these awards and awards, and then he's been going setting up more traps around the M60 motorway for us. And these men, these constables who are behind this, you know, if you are associated with Clog Teach and Roundhouse, you naughty boy will lock you up. Oh, here's a nice new, um, you know, it's Mr. Kelly, the Celt. Oh, he's passed his driving test and he's going up top of the moor. He thinks he's top of the moor. Now he's going past my traffic light camera. Ha <laughs> ha, here we go. Get the t- timing right on this one. Make sure that that t- lamp post is put exactly obstructed so you can't see the light at that exact distance that you're supposed to be able to see it from there. Well done, Fahey. You beauty! Here we go, Robin Hood riding through the glen with his band of men who uh, to watch out for the pit trap. Oh, oh, the sheriff's got me in his pit trap. You know, I'm a naughty boy. I've got the wrong name. you got the wrong name around here. They didn't change it. Now, if they'd have changed your name to Smith, then they wouldn't have been able to recognise who it was. But seeing though you're Mr. Kelly, I've got you. I'll lock you up in your little roundhouse and your clog teach you, naughty boy. You gotta be going past my camera. Yeah, but I want. I didn't go through the traffic light at, at red. I was going, you know, I didn't go through it. You know, this is more traps. You know, As, does anyone else feel this has happened to him? If, you know, but on oh, no, it's Graham Norton. He got through, but unfortunately, Terry Wogan was in the wrong place at the wrong time because Terry Wogan actually didn't quite make it to the end because all this kerfuffle started off a bit too early for Terry, unfortunately. You know, he's got the wrong name, his Wogan. You know, this is it. This is a problem. And unfortunately, that's the problem with the, the whole Northern Ireland thing in the IRA, you know, and I never understood it. Now we understand it because we've had an attack on our heritage and been made to look bad. And there's no, no they love better than to try and make you look bad than making themselves look good and everyone standing in formation and putting one hand up, you know, um, and singing the same song, you know, God save the Queen, don't save us all. You know, God save the Queen and eat your sugar cakes. God save the Queen and I'll eat my biscuits. You know, in fact, I will fight for them biscuits. I'll, I'll vehemently fight for my ill health. Yet yeah, I sing, may all the chances be forgotten to save all the time. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I, everyone's... People are retarded. I think people are retarded, you know, because it, it, it really is... They, they've got people now blocking and banning each other and they've got people eating themselves to death and loving and addicted to it, guided by celebrities and adverts. And that's good. That's all good. It's a good thing. It's not bad. Yet anyone who opposes it, like Extinction Rebellion or anyone else, you know, like, you know, Sinn Féin or whatever it is, is bad. We're naughty and we, we, we have to be locked up in here because we are stand for liberty and freedom and free speech and, you know, not doing, you know, being um, subjected to ridiculous traps and tricks and um, name changes and stamping out history and building on top of it. That's a problem. But, you know, if you don't believe it, fair enough. If you don't think there's any evidence for it, fair enough. I think there's evidence for it. And, unfortunately, the worst evidence for it is Bury St Edmunds, you know? You want a burial mound? You know? It's um, guaranteed ailments at an old age. I can't wait till, you know, my mum and dad become a grandma and then instead of running on the beach together, you know, for their last days on the planet, um, you know, you've got to be wheeling them about with a, you know, um, um, gout in the foot and all other horrible ailments. It's almost like, you know, they've been... It's like assisted suicide in a way. The, the last days you will remember with your family, with your heritage, will be ailments and illness, you know, um, not happiness and rosy cheeks and laughing and, you know, dancing a jig and playing a fiddle. The last, you know, ten, you know, the last five years with your family, you're going to see mobbling around and crawling on the floor and peeing in the pants and being sick, you know. That's that's what I remember about your heritage. The, you know, it, 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 maybe, you know, try and not see the dark side of life. We see the good side of life, but it's clearly obvious to any fool. It's like the Tories saying, no, oh, massive one third of the country won't vote for us, you know. Well, ignore them. It's dark matter. It doesn't matter because I won the vote. I have, they've got the system set up, so, you know, oh, I've got two votes, I win, you know. 
they, it's, they start, man, oh, pretend we're bothered, charities, charities, food banks, pretend we care. If you cared, then you would care that one third does not back or support what this government is freaking doing. And it will not do it or have the power to do it until it changes its policies in a manner which increases the votes up to half, 51%, in which then it has the right to assume overriding control. Which it doesn't, because it's never seen 50% of people. Because the people are not retarded and stupid. And unfortunately, their opinion doesn't matter. It's invalid. It's invalid, like people in old age. Invalids. Help them. Throw all your money into the charities to help the invalids that we created. They are the mills and the slaves and the working class, which we built and created in that place, particularly that area there. In Mordor, let's get that bricked in straight away, you know. Um, but that's the problem. Am I a bad person? It's not my fault that, you know, I. this is what I think it's bad. They think I'm bad, I'm bad. It's it's me, you know, it's versus, isn't it? You know, both pointing the finger. I'm, you know, they're saying I'm bad, I'm saying they're bad. All the things that they say good, unfortunately, it's an illusion, I don't think they are all good. Some things are good, but not all of it. And particularly when it gets to excess is what makes it bad. And, you know, the serious issues. And the, the, the track record, unfortunately, is that I don't think that these authorities who have been in charge really have been fit to be in charge. Because if you look at what they've been doing, all these basted chicken 1980s Christmas turkey, the whole perversion of a celebration is transformed into a horror thing really greasy basted turkeys and all sat around stuffing the faces um you know when well, a lot of religion was meant to be about fasting because you actually your body actually gets stronger and becomes more resilient if you go through periods of fasting which we do you're likely not to see at the moment it's i think it's an attack on the people They've still got the electric chair in America, you know. In America, they've still got the electric chair, but usually only reserved for um, apparently murderers. But yet we've got evidence of intended, strategically planned genocide of people, and many people are actually saying that now, not just me, like Jonathan Fuller is talking about genocide, but he's only talking about it when it comes to the environment and fossil fuels and smog that's been pumped out by factories, he is not calling it on how we've been treated by the products and addictive um, pro propaganda and advertising into these products, which is actually in a way that it makes you be a, a advocate of the product and actually sing, you know, sing the product theme tune. You know, it, even though it is causing detrimental effect, it's an affliction in a way, you know. It's, it's sad and tragic, you know, to see particularly, you know, people who you love and care about. And then you, you end up being the one who's, you know, oh, you don't want to be, you know, you're the one who the, the, you, you, you won't come and have a laugh with everyone or you're the one who's, you know, social outcast or whatever, or not outcast, but um, you refuse to participate or whatever. Um, I mean, there must be something wrong with you, you know. But at the end of the day, if you care about people's health and, and you know bad habits and stuff like that, it's sometimes hard enough to recognise your own and get out of them when you're surrounded by it and you can't get away from it. And some people may say, "Oh, we'll just go away, go somewhere else." But people might not be they might not be in the circumstances where it's easy to do that. You know, um, it, it, it's it's you know. I think that it's these political party franchises that is a problem. We need to ban political parties because banning political parties then means that you're not voting for an affiliation and really everyone should have an equal say. And then if anyone wanted to be in government anyway, they shouldn't be making money out of it themselves or for these weird companies that have got so big that they've got turnover bigger than nations and own pretty much everything Really, shouldn't there be a law to prevent that? Because to me, that's dangerous. Is it not dangerous for one company to own everything more than a government? Because then, doesn't that effectively mean that they're actually 
bigger than the government. In a way, it's a, they say that the whole point of having these global laws for nuclear weapons, and in, how can you have nuclear weapon inspector? It's like, oh, we might go to war, but we've got some people coming around saying you can't have this weapon or you can't have that weapon in the war. You know, we're going to have a fair fight, but you can't be using that weapon or that weapon. I don't really get that whole weapons inspecting. It's kind of ridiculous, the whole concept of it, you know, that a company could have a war, but yet now they're saying, oh, we'll take Putin to, um, after he's going to be, you know, a war criminal, yet, you know, apparently they've all been around and checked his weapons are all right in good order. It's kind of ridiculous, you know, but yet identifying what a weapon is, a television is a weapon if you're going to use it to get people to um, sing a, a song, even though singing a song of eating cakes when eating cakes is making them ill. And doctors are saying that. Dr. Eric Berg, you know. And, um, you know, Ick Berg, you know, th these doctors are saying that it's bad and harmful. Yet we're still having people singing songs um, and on TV put the adverts there to, you know, um, validate it and, and continue doing it when it's harmful. It's, it, has to, it is a weapon. It's like, literally, it, it is It is like when we had the Nazis and Hitler and all these experiments with people in front of like TV being programmed to us. That's what they're actually using now. That's what it actually is. That is what is in effect now. And, you know, you, you if you can see it, what's happening, it, it, but these big companies who own everything, their weapons are more dangerous than Putin's any day because you know it's worse what's worse if Putin sent a missile at us and blew us all into oblivion we're no good to him because he, he won't have people you know he, he, we're worth more alive to him than dead because you know who's gonna go and do the work you know who's gonna buy the products if Putin blows us up who's gonna go fucking go to McDonald's and buy all the burgers you know they're gonna sell less burgers so we're worth more alive to him than dead really um, the way they're going, and they don't want to lose any money at all. The 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 are so set on not wanting to shut the supermarkets down because they're making too much food that they're making up all this food bank propaganda and starving propaganda. When you look around, you know how many people have you seen dropping on the floor in the street starving, right? Um, it's so brainwashing us to carry on. They need us to carry on buying the stuff. So I seriously doubt they will blow us up like Putin with a nuclear weapon because, um, you know, if they didn't need us to buy the food, then they would have got us to stop eating all the food and stop putting the adverts out there. But my guess is that they need us to carry on buying it to make the money unless... So they're not going to blow us up um, because, you know, we're no good... We, they were better to them alive, but we're only good to them alive when we're not protesting and kicking off and rebelling um, or else we're... They need to lock us up in the naughty, the naughty boy in the naughty girl um, house like this that the, the um, naughty club teach. So that's the problem, and and I seriously think that um, they're going to shift into this new platform government that you can't argue with. There's no one at the end of it to answer to. It's their regime or nothing. Then you can't vote for it. You can't afford to vote for it. You can't afford to get a lawyer. Only the people who are making massive amounts of money can even afford legal help. And the lawyers won't even do what they want to do if they're not going against what the party wants to do anyway. So even if you do end up getting loads of money, then the lawyer won't do what you want him to do. Um, and then it's not going to be run on currency or money. You know, um, all the stock market will crash. And then they'll have all the money because Gordon Brown sold BlackRock all the gold and silver that he all owns. And then... Um, what they'll do is they'll use that gold and silver to buy massive amounts of other metals that they need to make the machines, and then they'll just use the machines and robots to police us like these androids and robots, and we'll all be under the regime. And then, then they'll kill us. They're not going to... Putin will wipe us all out and, until the BlackRock elite have made all the machines that are going to completely and totally... Dominating enforcers like the Johnny Five is alive rocket launcher, mobile police ones, that, and then your partner who's really a robot because you can't tell the difference between her. Then it gets kind of mental. I kind of stick, you know, if Elon Musk wants to do space rockets and machines, then that's fine. But how can we protect against this? 
um, future that it, 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 unless we stop advertising these behaviours and addictions and foods and find a government currency economy that doesn't depend on it like Reese Mogg depends on it no matter what uh, you know he can eat the dictionary for all I care he is dependent on it and you know he's not that clever because the clever man and the clever party with the clever um, government would already have easily with the power of television, um, reversed all these bad behaviours and habits and not be constantly pumping out or depend on them. It's a terrible machine that's dependent on more cake bun adverts and people who are fighting for the right for cake and buns when it only looks and smells nice, it's actually truly bad. It is a bad thing. It's naughty, you know. This is, you know, naughty people go in here. You know, really, it should be a cake. What we need is, this is what we need ideas like. This is, Elon Musk is meant to be like a radical thinker, kind of like, a, you know, he's, he's like, you know, Donald Trump on steroids or whatever. So, double down news, say. You need, mad, you need radical ideas like, you know, a cake prison cell, where if you eat too much cake, you get locked up in there without any cake. If you don't lock them up in there with cake... You know, this this is wacky ideas. Use you know, Liam Philip Schofield, spin the wheel. A more wacky TV presenter, Chris Evans, wacker day. Timmy Mallet with a massive mallet, wacker day enough. And today, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'm Timmy Mallet. Uh, uh, boing. You know, that's nuts, right? Matt, cake prisons. Forget post boxes. Forget telephone boxes. Cake cells, right? If you eat too many cakes, you get locked up in a cake cell. Right, and get delivered, you know, soup with the bare minimum nutrients and take it back to normal again. That'd be wacky and crazy, you know, fun house, it's a whole lot of fun, prizes to be won. Use your body and your brain if you want to play the game, it's patch up, you know. Where's all the, you know, things like that? And people will soon be singing God Save the Queen when they're locked up in a giant cup cupcake prison cell so they can't eat any cupcakes because they're eating too many. But unfortunately, the economy would drop out of the bottom of the floor. And then we'd all be going around on some cupcake roller coaster ride fairground thing, which literally is what it's turning into now with all these wacky YouTube channels and um just nuts adverts, nuts TV channels, um game show quizzes. It it literally is a circus. Um and, and I actually think that um it is possible to have some sort of society that is natural and healthy. There are a lot of people out there who can envision a, a natural fun, um, but normal society, what is not driven by greed and addictions and governments who are obsessed with numbers. How many likes have you got? What is the number? How many views have you got? What is the number? How much money have you got? What is the number? It's all number driven. You know, it's all popularity. Oh, it's an and deck. How many followers have they got? Well, it doesn't really matter what the numbers are you know, on the screen. You could say, you know, but uh, you know, how many people are watching it and sat in there and eating cakes and it's Saturday night takeaway, you know, when they could actually be making real, actual friendships. Oh, it's about making real friendships. We're getting them on the TV show. Oh, yeah. So in, in, in the glory and the salute of, you know, the carnival show, it's, it's kind of, that's what I think anyway. But, you know, as Russell Brand says, you know, if that is not, that is what I think, but might necessarily be what you think. But, I definitely think they've. There's evidence. This this is evidence that they try to, uh, to associate the things like the clog teach and the roundhouses with with bad things, you know. But yet their things are always good, you know. They they always want to keep the good image. The problem with with the current imperial powers is they always want to look good. They've got the uniform. They've got all the medals. They're doing all the charity work. Here's the awards. They're doing lots for charity. Here's the extravagant palace it's all greed and excess and we get you know oh no you're bad you know you're, you're the bad person that's that's the problem 